Good morning. In the previous few videos, we have been discussing the stresses in soil due to applied loads. We started off with the effect of a point load defined by the Boussinous equation and we later on moved to the strip loading. Then we went to the circular loaded area and then to a rectangular loaded area. Now let's try to see the stress under a load on an irregular area. Now, if you check any of the buildings that you see around, you can see that mostly they are irregular in plan. Rarely they are rectangular and very rarely they are circular. Now, the circular areas are usually related to the ones like the water tanks, etc. or silos, etc. And so, the irregular area is the one that's quite popular and we need to take care of the stresses under load on an irregular area for which we have what is called as a new marks chart. Now, for uniformly loaded areas of any irregular shape, you can actually use new marks chart. It, this is based on the concept of vertical stress below the center of the circular area, which we had defined as IC multiplied by Q, and IC being 1 minus 1 by 1 plus R by Z square raised to 3 by 2. Now this can be rearranged to have an equation of R by Z related to Zigma Z and Q like this. So Newmark's chart, the chart consists of a number of circles and radial lines making an array of concentric meshes and each unit of mesh causes equal vertical stress at the center of the chart and in Newmark's chart the length of one unit is Z, then the radius of the ring is R. So basically this R by Z equation is the one that can be used to define the new Marx chart and its story lies in the equation for vertical stress beneath the circular area. So based on this concept, the area inside each circle will be sigma Z by Q. And the area inside the first circle is 0 0.1, the second circle is 0 0.2, etc. So the new marks chart looks like this. Just an example, by the way, it has several radial lines and concentric circles. So consider a circle of radius R1 divided into two equal sectors. So the vertical stress at a point P at a depth Z below the center of the circle will be 1 by 20th of the load due to the entire circle. So when you have a circle of radius R or R1 divided into two sectors and the vertical stress at a point P at a depth Z below the center of the circle will be 1 by 20th because you have 20 sectors like this of the load due to the entire circle. So sigma Z P equal to 1 by 20th of IC multiplied by Q where IC is equal to 1 minus 1 by 1 plus R by Z square raised to 3 by 2. So this is basically the concept. Now the actual procedure in which you can actually find the vertical stress beneath the irregular area is you keep the plan of the loaded area drawn on a tracing sheet to a suitable scale. If you have a plan of a building foundation like this which is irregular you can you can actually draw that on a tracing sheet to a suitable scale. Now the location of the point where the stress is to be determined is marked on it as P. Now the tracing sheet is placed over the new marks chart such that the point P comes over the center of the chart and once that is done all you have to do is to count the number of meshes covered by the plan and you can count it as n and the vertical stress sigma ZP equal to I multiplied by n multiplied by Q where the influence factor I equal to 1 by Cs 
and C is a number of concentric circles and S is a number of radial lines. So the method is basically quite simple. All you have to do is to draw the plan of the foundation of the loaded area on a tracing sheet and you move it such that the point P, the one that you are interested in, comes over the center of the new mark circle. And once that's done, for example, this is the dotted line of the foundation in this case, and point P is here. So point P comes over the center of the new mark chart. And once that is done, you need to count the number of meshes which is shadowed by the foundation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc. So that will be N. The number of meshes covered within the loaded area will be N and I equal to 1 by CS where C is the number of concentric circles and S is the number of radial lines. Q is of course the load intensity in kilonewton per meter square. So I multiplied by N multiplied by Q will give you this vertical stress sigma Z P. At the point P due to the load on the irregular area. The commonly adopted I value of I is 0 0.005 corresponding to 200 pieces of circular segments usually practiced. Now the next one is the pressure distribution diagrams. This is again based on the Businesk equations and three types of pressure distribution diagrams may be used. Number one is called as an isobar. As the name suggests, isobar is a curve that joins points of equal stress intensity. Points of equal stress intensity is joined by an imaginary line which is called as an isobar. In this picture you can see a point load at the surface value Q and radially outward line is drawn here and vertically downward depth is drawn here as a Z. So these are influence isobars of intensity 0.1Q, 0.2Q, 0.3Q etc. getting concentrated towards the point of application of the point load. So it's a curved contour symmetrical with respect to the axis passing through the point load in this case Z axis. So it resembles a bulb or an onion geometry and the zone in which the stress have significant effect on the settlement of the structures is called as a pressure bulb. So pressure bulb is usually an isobar of 0.1Q. This line shown in this picture is usually called as a pressure bulb. So that is a, that is a zone in which the stress due to this point load has got a significant effect on the settlement. Now the second vertical stress pressure distribution diagram is again based on the Businesk equation. Like we said, we have Businesk equation which is given by sigma Zp equal to Ib into Q by Z square where Ib equal to 3 by 2 pi into 1 by 1 plus R by Z square raised to 3 by 2 r being the radial distance and z being the depth. So the second one, first one being the isobar, the second one is a vertical stress distribution on a vertical plane. So I have a load Q, point load Q in kilonewton acting on the ground level and let's say that I have a radial distance r moved outward and I've taken a vertical plane like this at a radial distance r. So the vertical stress distribution on a vertical plane may look like this based on the Businesk equation. So you have a radially outward distance taken here and a vertical plane considered there and in that vertical plane you are drawing the points of vertical stress distribution. Basically you are varying z value in this equation. So when the z values vary in this equation, it will represent a curve like this. And, this. and the third pressure distribution diagram is the vertical stress distribution on a horizontal plane. Which means you have the same system of Q load in kilonewton. And you have taken 
a horizontal plane let's say at a depth z below the ground level so the vertical stress distribution of horizontal plane would look like this it'll be have it'll be having a maximum value just near the point q or the point lot q and it starts to diminish as you go radially outward we'll start with the first question based on the Boussinesq equation a concentrated load of 2 kN is applied at the ground level determine the vertical stress at the point 6 meter directly below the load so you have a 2 kN force applied at the ground level so it's a point load 2 kN and you're asked to determine the vertical stress at a point 6 meter below the load and there is no radial distance given so it's directly below the point low 6 meter beneath the point of action at the ground level so basically r is equal to 0 and z is equal to 6 meter capital q is 2 kilo newton sigma zp equal to ib into q by z square where ib is 3 by 2 pi into 1 by 1 plus r by z square raised to 5 by 2 r is 0 z is 6 meters and q is 2 kilo newton so substituting that you'll get sigma z p as 0 0.0265 kilopascals approximately next question for the same case determine the vertical stress at a point 6 meter below the load but 5 meter away from its axis so the same question with the only exception that instead of radial distance 0 given in the previous equation previous question you have a radial distance of 5 meter you have the same figure here ground level 2 kN point load acts at the surface point P is 6 meter below it and 5 meter away from its axis so you have point P here Z equal to 6 meter R is equal to 5 meter capital Q equal to 2 kN same equation sigma zp equal to ib into q by z square you just have to substitute r equal to 5 z is equal to 6 and q equal to 2 kilo newton substituting the value turns out to be 0 0.0071 kilo pascal for sigma zp so comparing with the previous example you can see that as the radial distance increases the vertical stress intensity decreases next question calculate the vertical stress at a point p at a depth of 2.5 meter directly below the center of a circular area of 2 meter radius subjected to a load of 100 kilopascal so you have 100 kilopascal which is the stress intensity acting on a circular area whose radius is given as 2 meter you have 2 meter radius you have a circle you have stress intensity 100 kilopascal and you need to find the vertical stress at a point P below the center of the circle and at a depth of 2.5 meters so clearly this is a case of circular loaded area and sigma zp equal to ic multiplied by q where ic is given by 1 minus 1 by 1 plus r by z square raised to 3 by 2 where r is the radius of the circle given as 2 meter z is the depth given as 2.5 meters and q is 100 kilopascal so substituting that sigma zp equal to ic into q you'll get a value of around 52.4 kilopascal so try to work out these problems on your own and cross-check whether you are getting a similar answer